Joining our conversation now, the president of the American Nurses Association, Dr. Ernest Grant, and NBC News correspondent, Heidi Presbella. Dr. Grant, take me through what this experience is like right now, to be asked to do so much, to be asked to do the unthinkable, put themselves and their own families in danger with not just a lack of supplies, but suspicion being cast on them from the president, who earlier in the week accused them of hoarding or something worse of PPE. Uh, well, you are correct in that uh, these are people who are putting their very lives on the line. They are at the forefront taking care of uh, people who have been infected uh, with this virus. And they rightfully have the, the fear that uh, perhaps uh, they may contract it or worse yet, bring it home to uh, their family members. So they're doing, those who are protesting are doing um, what they feel is the need to call attention to the public of how very dire this situation is and the need for personal protective equipment to be brought to those who are at the front line. You know, anyone who's ever been hospitalized um, has come away feeling like it, 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 is, it is the nurses who really care for you. Uh, my colleague Stephanie Rule um, had a segment earlier this week talking about how now, because of the steps that hospitals are taking, nurses are the ones that are, are, are with you if and when you die, that without family members in the hospital, nurses are being asked to do even more. Can you talk about that? Well, you know, I've been a nurse for 41 years and have never regretted choosing that profession. We are there uh, from the beginning of life to the end of life, and we are with that patient 24/7, seven, seven days a week. Uh, we, you know, you establish a bond with them. And during this extraordinary, challenging time, um, obviously, as, as you're hearing, nurses are going above and beyond to still be that in between for the patient and their family member when they are, are transitioning. Um, and it just goes to show you the extraordinary uh, challenge that nurses are facing. And also people who take up the mantle to, uh, you know, to go into the profession, how they care about their fellow man. Heidi Presbella, um, it, uh, Dr. Redliner was on our program earlier in the hour. His son is an ER doctor um, and the nurse who works alongside him lost her life to COVID-19. Doctors and nurses um, are literally some of the highest risk people in this country right now. That nurse was not exaggerating when she said, we are no good to you if we ourselves are dead, because we are already starting to see some numbers. We saw in New Jersey uh, the first death of an ER physician. But I've also done some reporting, Nicole, of the numbers that are coming in on infection rates. Now, these are early, and there is no aggregate source. It is at a state level. But of the states that are keeping track, such as Minnesota and Ohio, Healthcare workers can account for up to 20% of overall infections. And the doctors and nurses I talk to mm. say mm. it's as a result of inadequate PPE. It's as a result of the just constant viral load, overload of the virus that they are uh, every day, you know, exposed to. And they say that there is an absolute disconnect between what we're seeing from the podium of the White House and what they're experiencing on the front lines. We're only now trying to get, you know, more information about why this is. Why is there this big disconnect when the White House every day comes out and gives us these numbers of millions of masks, millions of gloves? Where are they? Why aren't they on the faces of those nurses and doctors? And now we're starting to get answers that the government, in fact, is not sending them directly to hospitals, that they're going through their same old uh, distribution chains and being marked up and causing states to, to have to bid and be in bidding wars for them. Dr. Grant, what can people do? I think people who are at home um, watching the news feel helpless and they want to protect um, the people on the front lines keeping us safe. What can they do? Well, there, there are three things that I would ask the general public to do. Number one is, of course, listen to the uh, local officials or authorities as they're telling you to stay at home and practice good hand hygiene so that we can uh, prevent the spread of, of this virus. Uh, the second thing is the American Nurses Association has this started a coronavirus nurse uh, recovery fund. And uh, if they could uh, take out their cell phone and text the word thanks, to 20222 and donate $10. This fund will go to help 
uh, nurses as far as with uh, mental health needs, um, also help with continuing education uh, as we get new information about this virus, and also just their uh, general relief fund uh, you know, for, for nurses. Um, and then the third thing is, if you know of someone in your community who is a member of the healthcare team, check on their family members while they are at work. Those random acts of mm -hmm. kindness really do go a very long way. Dr. Grant, we will put all that information online today for our viewers. Thank you for spending some time with us. Heidi Presbella, thank you.